Hey guys, Mike here from Arnold Tutoring. We've done videos in the past on the present value and the future value of the annuity formula, but I wanted to actually show how one of these formulas is derived. As opposed to just saying, here's the formula, plug in the numbers and you're good to go. Let's see why this is actually the case. So I've written the present value of an annuity formula. I'm using I for the interest rate uh, per period. So it doesn't really matter if these are years or months. We're just using this as the effective rate per period. I'm using N as the number of periods. So this is our general formula, one minus one over one plus I to the N over I. You may have seen this part, the one over one plus I to the N written as V to the N. Either way, this is the, uh, this is the formula for the present value of a stream, a level stream of payments. So let's look at how that comes to be. I've drawn a quick timeline here, and this is also the formula, remember, for when payments are made at the end of the period. So I've shown $1 at the end of the next four years, and I want to know what the present value of these cash flows is at time zero. So what are we going to do? Well, we need to discount each of these individual cash flows and then add all of those up. That's how this formula comes to be. So if I'm going to discount this back to time one, back to time zero, I know I need to take the dollar and divide it by one plus I, right? Because it's got to come back one period. This dollar has to come back two periods. So I'm going to take that dollar and I'm going to divide it by one plus I squared. Same thing with this one, one plus I cubed, and one over one plus I to the four. Those are the discounted cash flows. So these are the raw cash flows. You actually will get paid a dollar at each of those times. But in blue, these are the discounted cash flows, meaning the value of those dollars out in the future brought back to today. So what they're actually worth today. So all we wanna do is we wanna add up all of these payments. Now, you could do that using a bunch of algebra, but it's much easier to see that the first term is one over one plus i, and then each, to get to each successive term, it's just multiplied by one over one plus i. Right, that's each additional term. If you just multiply it by one over one plus i, you get to the next one. So this is a geometric series, and hopefully we remember back um, in, for the formula for the sum of a geometric series, I'll write it here. The sum of an n, uh, n period geometric series is the, fr uh, the first term, which I'll write as a, into one minus r to the n over one minus r. So a is your first term, r is the common ratio, so what you're multiplying by to get to the next term, and n is how many terms. So we're looking for the sum of these four terms. My first term is one over one plus i, multiplied by one, minus r is also one over one plus i, because that's what we said we would multiply by to get to each next term. There's four terms, all over one minus r, one over one plus i. So this looks kind of messy right now, but we can see how we can pretty quickly clean it up. Uh, if I take the bottom and I get it over a common denominator, this, I'm just going to change it right here. This becomes 1 plus i over 1 plus i, because it was just 1 before. Now we can subtract on the bottom. We get 1 plus i minus 1 on top is just i over 1 plus i. So the top stays the same. Again, this becomes one plus i minus one is just i over one plus i. Now because we've got one over one plus i on top and i over one plus i on the bottom, those can just cancel. Leaving us with one minus one over one plus i to the four over i. And this exactly matches our initial formula, right? N is four because there were four periods, four payments being made out in the future. We're dividing by I, and so it's fairly simple algebra that cleans up that formula. The key is to remember this is the geometric uh, series form, the sum of a geometric series. Geometric series meaning we multiply by something to get from one term to the next, and that's your R value. 
So that's a quick little demonstration as to where this whole present value formula comes from. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to Arnold Tutoring. We're posting tons of finance videos, tons of calculus, pre-calculus, all the time, every day. Um, and if you have any other requests for particular, particular videos that you'd like us to cover, please drop them in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much.